Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today is the 21st of December. It is four days before Christmas and this means that we are at a time of the year when we are being sold so much stuff. We are told that we must analyze exactly how we feel about our loved ones, assign that feeling a monetary value and get that person an according gift. Now, the whole system is pretty bizarre to me, but there's something else that I would like to discuss in terms of what we are sold at this time of the year particularly, but also just generally speaking. And it is the concept of compulsory happiness. So this is something that makes my dad hate Christmas because he feels that at this part of the year, he's not allowed to be his charming, normal, very grumpy self. And that makes him kind of feel really uncomfortable at this time of year. Everything's about joy and love and happiness and that's great and everything, but I do think that it is symptomatic of a larger problem that I've been wanting to discuss for a while and Christmas just seems like a good time to mention it. Now I should just clarify that I am not a mental health professional, I, I have an A level in psychology and that's all I have to offer on the topic in terms of credentials. I'm just someone who's very interested in the topic and I feel like I'm going to say words that would have benefited me a few months ago. I feel that's kind of what this channel is, I just say things that I wish I knew Earlier. So one of the things about living in 2018 in this modern day Western world is that we are very mental health focused, which, you know, is generally a good thing. It's all about self-acceptance and self-love. But the problem with this way of thinking, the problem with this being something that is promoted to us is that it implies that happiness is the norm, that it is the expected default setting that we should have. If we fall short of it, something's wrong. If we feel anxious and stressed, something's wrong. If we are not feeling happy, something's wrong. Now, quick disclaimer, there are absolutely people out there who have, you know, depression, anxiety, all sorts of mental disorders that I couldn't possibly attempt to understand. And I'm not trying to belittle or take anything away from these people. I'm almost just analyzing myself and how I have felt and the information that has helped me. I think the way we analyze the way we think is coming from the wrong perspective or certainly the way that I used to analyze the way that I thought was coming from the wrong angle because I would be happy most of the time and occasionally I wouldn't be very happy. I would be unhappy or I'd be stressed or I'd be anxious or I'd be scared or I'd feel alone or any of these feelings. And then I would think to myself, why aren't I normal? Why aren't I back to my default setting of happiness? Why aren't I content? What's wrong with me? What's the problem here? When, when you think about it, that's the wrong question to be asking yourself. If you feel unhappy and you ask yourself, why am I feeling unhappy? That's not the bigger question. The bigger question, the one that we really should be asking and the one that gives us the best sense of perspective is in a, in a life where we, we, we understand our own mortality, where the horrors of humanity are just a few countries away, you don't have to look very far to realize exactly how bleak existence can be. The weight of of the knowledge that you are going to die one day on your shoulders, facing all of these truths head on with the knowledge that this is irrefutable. How do we find it in ourselves to be happy? How do we find it in ourselves to be joyful day to day when there is so much darkness? That is the real question. So when you think about it like that, when you think that happiness isn't a default, happiness is a luxury and it is something to be so, so grateful for, it completely turns things around. It completely gives you a fresh perspective of the concept of just enjoying your life. If you are happy some of the time, you are lucky. If you are happy most of the time, like I am, you are so, so fortunate. You are so lucky. It is, it is not a given to be this fortunate at all. And I think to expect ourselves to be happy all of the time and beat ourselves up for falling short of that isn't it's not paying sufficient gratitude to the situation we find ourselves in. I used to feel like I was told or I thought that I had to strive for happiness, like happiness was the goal and feeling other feelings meant that I was falling short of the goal. It made it seem like it wasn't okay to feel things like to feel competitive or anxious or stressed or overwhelmed or like crying, like these weren't normal things to feel. But really our like our spectrum of emotions that we 
that we have are like different lenses through which we can see the world and see our own lives. They're useful. It, we wouldn't feel our feelings if it wasn't an adaptive thing, if it wasn't evolutionary beneficial to feel them. There's, there's a reason why we have feelings other than happiness. Our experience of this world is incredibly complex and I feel like I've only recently just given it the attention that it really deserves because I used to beat myself up quite a lot for feeling the way that I didn't want to feel, as if I, I was l like losing almost. It was like I knew what I should be feeling and I wasn't feeling it, therefore I wasn't succeeding in that one thing. Now that I understand properly that any feeling I feel is fine, and not only is it fine, but it's normal. It, ironically, <laughs> has made me quite a lot happier. So, you know, if I feel anxious, it's fine. If I feel stressed, it's fine. If I feel tired or grumpy, it's fine. It's all absolutely fine. I used to get so caught up in how I should feel and how I thought others felt or how others would feel in my situation that it would add this extra weight onto whatever I was feeling. So I would feel the feeling, but then I would also be annoyed at myself for feeling the feeling or frustrated with myself for feeling the feeling. But it's fine. You don't have to be happy all the time. If there is anything that we should be feeling or should be doing in this world, it is growing, improving, being the most useful human being that we can be. And you don't grow without feelings of discomfort. You don't become a better version of yourself without going out of your comfort zone and generally wandering into unexplored territory is gonna be scary in some way. And I think that putting too much of a focus on being happy, it kind of, um, it, it means your life, your life exists within a walled city of some sort. You deprive yourself of the motivation to to go further afield and to try to try new things and to, to grow. There's a quote I like from Ralph Waldo Emerson, which is, the purpose of life is not to be happy. It is to be useful, to be honorable, to be compassionate, to have it make some difference that you have lived and lived well. And happiness will most likely be a byproduct of this, but it isn't, it's not the thing, it's not the thing to fight for. If anything, happiness is a distraction from the things I was talking about earlier about mortality and cruelty and the true darkness that can exist within our humanity that we kind of have to look the other way from and you know say that we're too civilized to be but it, it's within us you know the darkness of our of what we could be capable of is within us and these are very these can be quite disturbing harrowing thoughts and I think that focusing on Happiness is like looking the other way. Not that there's anything wrong with that either. I just think that it's very important when, if we are, if we live in a society where we're trying to strive towards happiness, it's very important to also acknowledge what we are probably looking away from. If our attention is drawn towards one thing, the likelihood is that it's because looking in the opposite direction is gonna be quite painful. And I think that is certainly true of happiness. I feel like for a Christmas video, this is very dark and I'm very sorry, but um, I'm hoping you watching this now are someone who enjoys this kind of thing. If you aren't, you probably clicked off now by now, so it's fine anyway. I'm just gonna keep talking. So why is everything so happiness centric at the moment, at, at in the world generally, as well as now at Christmas? Well, I suppose it's not gonna be any surprise to you, dear viewer, who, if you know me fairly well, the one of the reasons, or the most evident reason that I can think of is that happiness is, a, is an incredible marketing tool, happiness sells. We are told that the goal is happiness and we are told that something that will make us happy is you know, buying these products or being this kind of person, doing these things, going to these kinds of places. That's why we buy stuff. We buy stuff because we think it's gonna make us happy. And as Christmas is one of the most important times of the year for advertisers, it comes as no surprise that the more we get advertised to, the more this idea of trying to be happy gets pushed on us, the idea that happiness is the norm. We don't just get sold products, we get sold the idea of the perfect day, of the perfect family. It is implied to us that if Christmas isn't full of joy and sparkles and rainbows and happiness, then we've done something wrong, that we have failed at Christmas or we haven't sufficiently prepared for a happy Christmas. But the reason that that pressure is put on us is because they're 
they want us to, to buy things. It always comes down to money and it's bleak and it's sad and it's horrible. But Christmas is just a day or it's just, you know, a time of the year. It's it's no it's no different really to any other time of the year. If you happen to feel a bit crap, that's fine. Don't worry. You don't worry if you don't feel full of joy when you wake up on Christmas morning. But of course, remember that even if you are feeling terrible, you can still treat people well. You don't have to let your feelings influence your actions wholly, even though it's, it's easier said than done. You can be a bit miserable and, and still be nice to people. And I need to stay outright as well that I am not at all saying that we shouldn't be happy. Happiness is ultimately a good thing. I'm not saying that you shouldn't try and be happy, but I'm saying that you should always be careful if anything is sold to you as the norm or as something that is the default setting that you should have or how things should be. If we buy into the idea that there is some ideal version of how we are meant to feel or we are meant to be, then we are always going to fall short of that because we are just humans experiencing a very complex world. So the reason I wanted to talk about this is because I recently finished a few sessions of counselling. And it's not that I particularly felt like I needed counselling. I feel fine. I'm very, very lucky. I'm very fortunate. Everything's good. But I really like Anna Rakana, and she is a very big advocate for talking therapies, even if you don't feel you need it, just because everyone's got shit to unpack and, you know, you just, it can be a, it can be a helpful and interesting thing. So I did that. And one of the things I came away with that was, has been the biggest change is this concept of however you feel, that's fine. I was a very big fan of uh, beating myself up for feeling ways that I didn't think I should feel. So if I felt lazy, then I would be really angry at myself for being lazy. Or if I felt, um, I don't know, stressed, even though there's nothing to be that stressed about, I would also then feel annoyed at myself for being stressed. Whereas now that I understand that however I feel is normal because I shouldn't expect myself to be happy all the time, I am able to work past those feelings because feelings are fleeting. I think of them like, it's like a, a commentary on what's going on. So however I'm choosing to live my life, whatever actions I'm taking, my feelings are just a commentary on those things. And they're there for perspective. They're there because they are, you know, they have an evolutionary purpose. They're, they, they're gonna be useful, but it doesn't mean that I have to live my life by them. So, you know, I can think to myself, I really don't wanna go to the gym and then just go to the gym or, I don't want to do any work right now and then get on with some work. And the likelihood is that I will change how I feel by acting differently. And this has been very, very motivating and very interesting and something that I think is very, very important to share. And I feel like Christmas puts a big, big focus on having the perfect day and feeling exactly how you should feel because that's how the people on the adverts look like they feel. And I just wanted to tell you that however you feel, it's fine. I do have a lot of respect for tradition, even though I don't buy into a lot of it myself, but I think that it's just another day and it's not going to be any different to any other day really. And continue feeling how you feel, accepting how you feel and trying your best in every single moment. And you're going to be fat. Everything's going to be fat. I was reading a few articles for this video and one of the quotes I came across, I really liked was Christmas is supposed to make you smile not make you feel like you have to smile. I should just mention as well that the likelihood is that you're gonna be spending some time with somebody who loves you and expects you to be happy, or wants you rather, wants you to be happy on Christmas day. And for that, I would say, even if you don't feel like it, be grateful that you have somebody who wants the best for you like that. And try and be in the moment as best you can. Try and get out of your own head whenever you can. And remember that feelings are valid, but they're also fleeting and they are changeable. They are, as I said, they're a commentary on, on your life. They are not the foundation on which your life is built. They are passing, passing judgment, passing whims. They are like, they are like the wind around you as you, as you make your decisions and take action in the direction that you choose using the rational part of your brain. There you go. That's what feelings are. So I hope there was something useful in there. There were some bits where it got pretty dark, but I hope the overall theme was optimistic as it is Christmas and we are meant to all be happy all of the time, of course. But I will see you before Christmas. I will. So I'm going to not say Happy Christmas now 
because I'm going to save it for later. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a lovely day and I look forward to seeing you in the comments. Please feel free to follow me on my Instagram where I haven't, I sort of haven't been uploading in ages, but I will. So that's, that's something to look forward to. And also to check on my blog where there's a similar story, but you know, New Year's resolution, it's coming, it's coming. You're gonna, you're gonna be sick of me soon, I'm sure. One of these days you will have, there'll be so much content, you will feel overwhelmed and showered by the amount of content coming your way. I can feel it, it's, it's happening. So I shall see you later, goodbye. Hope you do it. Hope you do it well. Day and night, it's not the same as being wrong, right? There is surely grace, but sometimes the sanity is easy and some things are never okay. As my words disperse like a flock of birds, way over your head. And all because my choice of words says something I love.